Good morning. Happy Saturday to you. Hope you're doing well this morning. Beautiful sunrise coming up over my shoulder back there. A little cloudy, but the sun's starting to peek out. I got a little bit of a better view of it than what you guys do. Speaking of views, a friend of mine sent me this. Check this out. Is that beautiful or what? I'm telling you what, that's a dog park. But I tell you what, it looks more like an amusement park. It looks like Disney World. And I should know because I worked there. I bet you didn't know that about me, did you? Yeah, I used to be a lifeguard at Disney World. Earn my ears. And if anyone's ever worked for Disneyland or Disney World, you know exactly what I mean when I say that. Got my ears. Okay, guys, well, I want to talk about this because when you look at this and you think about going to amusement park, you're thinking about play. When most people think dog parks, they think play. When in all actuality, I'll tell you what you really need to think, honestly, and don't mean to rain on your prey, is you need to think the Hunger Games. I kid you not, you just entered into an arena, a fenced-in arena, in which the contestants are armed with fang and claw. They are. And it's every dog for himself, and every interaction, it, 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 the condition changes. The condition changes interaction by interaction, not visit by visit, not minute by minute. Purely every interaction can end up in an explosive fight immediately with fang and claw, with one contestant taking out another one. All it takes is for one dog to walk up to another one. One that's fearful, one that really doesn't want to be there. It's there because the owner wants it to be there. The, the owner's kind of living vicariously through their dog. They're thinking, well, you're going to go to the dog park and you're going to play and you're going to like it. Yeah, yeah, you're going to love it. The dog's sitting there thinking, I'm not loving anything here. I'd really go back home. I don't like these other dogs here. It's scary being here, really scary. And all of a sudden, here comes your dog pushing it, pushing. And that's what a lot of young dogs do. And that's what prompted me to do this little video this morning. It's because we have a uh, viewer uh, that is a member of one of our uh, Facebook groups. We have lots of Facebook groups here. And she's got a five-month-old puppy that she's been taking to the dog park. And she's a little bit concerned because her puppy does seem to love it. And some dogs really do. They go and they kind of pester the other dogs. They kind of provoke the other dogs. They try to, they want to solicit social play, which is really important for dogs. But the problem is that this little puppy is starting to run into dogs who really don't want to play with it. And it's going up and it's flopping down on the ground, rolling on its back and showing its tummy, doing all the things that was genetically programmed to that puppy before it was even born. It's doing all these submissive, active submissive behaviors hoping that if I do that, you'll realize I'm not a threat. I'm not a problem. I just want him. I'm just here to play. But sometimes you walk up to the wrong dog. You walk up to dogs very fearful and does not want you in its face. You also walk up to dogs who have the attitude, I don't get ulcers. I give ulcers. And yeah, that thing's going to give your dog an ulcer in a real hurry. So you got to be really careful. If you hop on our website, TameTheWild.com, and go to the media pages, you'll see a picture of, many pictures actually, of Captain. When I wrote my first book, Embracing the Wild and Your Dog, we took Captain all over. I think we went to every darn major city east of the Mississippi River, and then even a few of them west of the Mississippi River. And Captain was only about seven months old, if you look in those pictures. And because we were traveling, staying in hotel rooms, we didn't have a place like this to go take him on a hike every day, we took him to dog parks. And sometimes we didn't, meaning we went to the dog park, but we didn't enter the dog park. Or we did enter the dog park, and we left after a few minutes because of the contestant that entered the dog park or was already preoccupied by dogs. I did not feel comfortable about Captain being only seven months of age going into that dog park. Again, I'm going there for the same purpose as you. I want him to get socialization. I want him to learn how to approach dogs that are very aggressive to a degree at a safe distance where I can monitor it. But I don't want a lifelong consequence to occur. And that's what can happen to young dogs because they're so young. They're so impressionable. They're so vulnerable. Things that happen to them, if the dog is under about six, seven months of age, anything that happens to them, they will never recover recover from that. Never, ever recover from it. And you just got to think about that. It's initial excess or total failure. 
you must, until proven otherwise, until you know these dogs that are in that dog park, you've been there before, you've seen interactions with your puppy before with these dogs, you must enter that arena like you are entering the Hunger Games. Do it for the sake of your dog, because sometimes they just don't get it. It all depends upon the puppies that they were raising, their siblings, their mother. How much interactions did they get? What was the quality of those interactions that they received? Don't, this can be a tough school for your dog. It can be a school that, again, it's what I do. I deal with dogs who suffer from unusual fears, phobias, OCDs. And most of these I can trace back to not only genetics, but the environment immediately after, during a sensitive period of their life and a few months following that. Always, always, always. So again, you know, you, you hear the old saying, the highway to hell is paved with good intentions. I know you have good intentions about taking young dogs to dog parks, but you've got to be very, very careful. Kind of like one of those trust but verify situations. <laughs> So here's a couple things you can do because I know you want your dog to have socialization. That is really important. It needs to have exposure. Also needs to be around other animals that have specific diseases and viruses and everything that's related to them. So it can build their autoimmune system, bolster them up, get their antibodies going there. So they don't become sick all the time. Take your dog, think about taking your dog maybe to a daycare. Of course, check out the daycare first. I've done videos on daycares. Check them out. But here's one of the major differences about a daycare versus the dog park. Well, you have supposedly trained professionals who are there, supposedly they're watching all the dogs. They're typically watching all the dogs. They're not just a lot of dog owners that go to a dog park. And of course, who are they watching? Their dog. Their dog. They're not watching what's happening over here. They're not looking at the big dog that's approaching their little puppy right now. They're watching their puppy. And that's only for about the first five or ten minutes. Then they're talking to someone else that's at the dog park. They're not paying attention to anything. At least at the daycare, you got someone that's watching all of the dogs, gauging the interactions, removing dogs, trying to set the chemistry the way it needs to be, trying to do everything that they can to prevent a poor outcome. And it can happen. I'm not, I'm not telling you, you, you take your dog to a daycare, your dog's not going to get bitten because it happens. It's, it's happened in my daycares. I've had daycare since the early 1990s. And I tell you what, they will. And I don't care who, you could be standing right on top of them, they could be between your legs. And I see you know, there's a full on fight. Uh, as I wrote in my book, The Hammer, Why Dogs Attacks and How to Prevent It, for aggression to be effective, it has to be swift. So it's coming quick. Good luck trying to prevent that once it's on its way. But for the most part, far safer. Far safer. They can control everything from the size, the size of the play groups, the temperaments of the animals, the genders. All the things that you need for social predators to have a chance and not trying to solve a dispute or trying to make someone get out of my grill. Young, I'm just always worried about these young puppies just going to dog parks where you don't know what's in that darn thing. And don't count on, I'm sorry, this is not, this is not a front to you guys out there, but don't count on another dog owner knowing their dog. I, I'm just not going to risk that. There's some things I can risk that with. Not, not the lifelong mental health or even physical health of my young puppy. I, I'm sorry. I love you guys. I'm going to trust me, my knowledge, and my dog. And then when you prove to me that you got some good knowledge, you got a good dog, and everything's going to be cool, I'm cool. We're all going to be cool. If I see you at the dog park again, unless it's been a couple months and my dog's grown up and got a little taller, now, eye to eye with your dog, that changes everything. Principal resemblance. Done videos on those. Check those out as well. Things can change. So that doesn't, that's another point. You got a young puppy, take it to a dog park. Young puppies are slow maturing mammals, but they do mature eventually. You keep going to that same dog park, a year goes by, and your five-month-old dog is now 17 months old. Watch out. Things change. It could be your dog who's now the aggressor. It's your dog giving ulcers not receiving ulcers. It's your dog. Things change. Play, keep this in your darn head. You're entering the Hunger Games. That's what you think at first. Conditions change in that arena, interaction by interaction, even with the same dog. Even with the same dog. Let two boys wrestle. Let them keep wrestling. 
One boy keeps getting pinned by the other boy over and over and over again. Trust me, after about 10 minutes, someone's going to come up swinging. Yeah, they may make up later, but your dog doesn't know that makeup thing. They only remember cause and effect. So kind of keep that in your head. The other thing to think about doing is, you know, there's so many of these social media sites out there nowadays. You know, neighborhoods, next door neighbor, a whole bunch of other things. Get on there. Post it. Say, hey, I have this young puppy. This is the breed. He's rambunctious, loves to play, but kind of full of himself. I would like to start a small play group. And then talk to one another. Interview one another. Check it out. Try it out on long leashes first. Make sure. Not short leashes. Short leashes can make a dog fight that would never fight. Yeah. Give them some space. I, I like about a 20-foot long line. You can even lay it on the ground. Just make sure your foot's right near it. And then any given moment, if we got something going south, pull the dogs apart and say, okay, learn from that. Maybe we'll try that again later. But try to make a play group. Get some friends together. Make some friends. Let your dogs play. You can do that. You can do that with social distancing. No problem whatsoever. But try that out. Try to match the same temperament. Roughly opposite genders if you can. That always works a little bit better. And make sure that their energy levels are about the same. And tell you what, the, the outcome to that is going to be a really positive outcome. That's what you're looking for right there. That's what you're looking for. What you're not looking for is my 15-pound, 20-pound, 5-month-old dog getting flat-out thumped like it's some WWE smackdown by an 80, 90-pound dog. I promise you that will have lifelong consequences don't it's not worth it i wrote a blog gosh years ago uh put it on the website it's titled will of the wallflower check it out because again so many times we think dog park and they build these darn things like the one i showed you i think it's in west virginia Four and a half acres, a pavilion, cameras, artificial turf. I, I can't even imagine how much that cost. And good for them for doing that. I just don't want you to be lured into the candy that is just being dangled in front of you. Except the fact that you own a social predator. Yeah, predator. Not a rabbit. Not some fuzzy, not a goldfish, banging claw in a fenced in arena. Think Hunger Games before you think play. And then when it's all good, then you get to think play. And keep it all good, keep it all safe. All right. Man, it's beautiful. Put a smile on your face. Just kind of take that in back there for a second. Gal dog. Come on, boy. Oh, that put a smile on your face. Okay. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Love you. Talk to you tomorrow. Hang in there.